day one of the Upwork Mentorship um, series. So um, if you are new to this channel, my name is um, Jesse Kamara. I am a full-time Upwork freelancer. I have been doing this a little over um, 18 months. I've been working on Upwork as a freelancer, and I am also a professional product manager. That's my specialization on the platform. So today, this, in this video, we are going to look at um, three things, all right? And this is basically an introductory to Upwork, all right? So the first thing that we are going to talk about is, is um, we are going to define what is freelancing. What is it? <laughs> Some of you guys who have been watching my videos, I know you already know what is freelancing. However, for, for new people that are joining the channel, it is important that you understand what freelancing is. And then next, we are going to talk about the psychology of the platform. And this might be something new to you, but um, I'm going to talk about how, um, what's the psychology of the client and also what is the psychology of a freelancer? How do we think about the platform? So I'll be going into a little bit more details in those, in those concepts. And next, we are going to look at um, just a walkthrough of the Upwork interface. And I'm going to explain how you should think about it when looking at the Upwork interface, all right? So it's just an introductory into the Upwork platform as a freelancer if you want to be a freelancer. So let's get started right away. So um, what is freelancing, guys? Let's, let's, let's discuss this. It's important that you understand what is freelancing. So um, freelancing, for me, in my opinion, I'm not using an academic um, definition here. I'm using my own definition here, all right? Freelancing is a value exchange um, 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 agreement between you and a client, all right? So you, you as a freelancer or someone who is working as a consultant, you can be a consultant, so you have a value that you're providing. And also, you want to provide that value to a client. So you come to an agreement to exchange value. So the definition, why do I decide to define freelancing as a value exchange agreement or a value exchange a mechanism? Why? Because if I am a freelancer, I have skills, right? I am skilled or I have expertise in a particular field. And I know and I'm confident that I'm, I, I will be able to provide those skill sets or I want to provide my expertise to a client. And the client is willing to pay me for that expertise. Now, I did not say the client is paying me for the time. I said the client is going to pay me for my expertise. So um, when, when you are working a nine-to-five job, you are being paid Sometimes you are mostly you are paid for the time that you spend at work, right? So whether you are actually providing value or not, as long as you are going to work, you are following the rules, you will be paid for your time. Of course, there are some other nine to five jobs that actually pays you for your expertise. But freelancing on the other hand, you are being paid for your expertise. You are not paid for your time. You are paid for your expertise, all right? So um, although for some of these platforms, you actually, track, uh, you actually track your time, right? Like you actually track your hourly rate and whatnot, but you are being paid for your expertise. And the moment you stop providing that expertise or the, the client realizes that, the expertise that you are providing is no longer sufficient or they are not satisfied with that expertise, they will terminate that agreement. Therefore, if you are providing expertise, it is in your own interest to make sure that you charge clients according to how you value your expertise. This is really important. That is why you are the one setting the rates. You are the one saying, pay me X amount of money or pay me this amount of money for me to do this kind of work for you. So it, 
So now, and also what you need to understand is you don't have to take a whole day or take a whole month to do something before you can be paid the equivalent of a whole month in a nine to five job. So what do I mean? I can spend an hour to do a certain job for a client and then the clients can pay me $1,000. In a nine to five job, I will have to have like um, maybe um, some, a, couple, a number of years of experience, right? Maybe five, six, or even 10 years of experience before I can have a salary that is equivalent to $1,000 in my local currency. But as a freelancer, I can just do a one hour job or maybe two hours job, and then I'm paid that money. I am not paid that. So the client is not paying me for my time. The client is paying me for my expertise. That is something that is really, really important that you need to understand. And why is this important? Because if you understand that the client is paying you for your expertise, you will do two things. Number one, you will make sure that your skills are sharp, they are updated, and they are top-notch. You are not going there as a mediocre or a novice. You are going there as an expert. That's one thing. Number two, you will charge the clients very well for your skills that you have. So as a freelancer, you are required. What you are selling is skills. So therefore, you are required to make sure those skills, they are top-notch. They are the best in the market. And secondly, they are updated. Your skill sets are updated. Your expertise is updated. All right? So that is the definition of freelancing. So freelancing is a value exchange. And you have to always think about that and know that it has to stay in the back of your mind. You don't have to sit there and think that, oh, I can just, um, a client will just give you a job. No, the client do, does not have obligation to give you a job. You must be able to provide expertise that the client needs and then they will pay for it. Next. Now let's talk about the psychology of the platform. I know most of you um, that are currently watching me, you might think that, okay, Jesse, let's go to the good thing. Let's start um, doing something, some practical. Yes, we are going to the good stuff. But sometimes this background information is very, very important to help you get started and to help you to become successful on the platform. Most of us, we, we just assume that we know these things. But when you get to the platform, you start struggling and you don't know why you are struggling. Because firstly, you don't even understand the way the platform operates, why the platform is built. So to understand the, the psychology of the Upwork platform, there are three things you have to understand. The platform is built for three kinds of users. All right. Number one is the freelancer. So when Upwork was building the platform, they were thinking about you as a freelancer. And I know most of you that are watching this video, you want to go to Upwork and work there and make money for yourself, all right? You want to sell your expertise, your skills, and then you get an income for that. On the other hand, there is someone who goes to the platform, which is another user who is called the client. They go there to buy expertise. They go there to look for people that have skill sets that they need so that they can pay them for those skill sets. And then the third user is Upwork themselves. They also manage the platform. They are also users on the platform. So these three types of users, the freelancer, the client, and Upwork, all the three of them have different interests. They have different things that they are looking for. So now let's start with the client because I will tell you, the client is the most important person on the platform. Because even if you go and you will not go and post your skill set or your expertise in any in any um, um, platform wherein there are no clients or there are no jobs. So the client is actually the, the kingmaker, so to speak, on the platform. They are in charge. They are the ones who are really who, who, who are the most important type of users on the platform. So let's start with them. Now, how does the client think about Upwork or how do they think about this platform? Number one, the first thing that the client, the first concern that the client has is um, reliability. All right. So the clients, 
I'm, I'm more con they are concerned about reliability and what does reliability means for the client in the mind of the client firstly they are concerned for a new client on the platform they are firstly concerned that whether the platform itself upwork is reliable second whether the people they are reliable whether the 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 the, 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 the freelancers on the platform they, whether they are reliable now what does this mean this is really important. You need to understand that that's one of the things that the clients um, um, are concerned about. And why should you know about this? Why should you care about the client psychology? Now, when you are writing proposals on the platform, if you understand the psychology of the client, you know exactly what to tell them so that you can stand out. That's why it is important to pay attention to what I'm going to explain. So the first thing is reliability. So the client is already concerned whether the platform itself is reliable, all right? So whether the platform is going to protect the client because they are going to spend money. Most of these clients that are coming to Upwork, these are clients that have startup businesses. If you understand what a startup business is, mostly startup businesses have limited cash. They don't have too much money. They are not like these big, big or large companies that have a bag of money to spend. They don't, they don't, they don't, not that they don't care about the money, but they have a lot of it to spend. But startups, they have limited cash. And mostly this cash is coming from the pockets of the clients. They don't have investors. They are actually taking their own money to invest. So imagine you taking your money to invest. One of the things that you will be worried about is reliability. Reliability of the platform. Now, Upwork is reliable, so it protects the client. It protects both the client and the freelancer, and all of us know that. So, instantly, the moment the client creates an account, they are being told that you are protected by Upwork's terms and services. We have um, the hourly rate which provides protection, so the client becomes confident that the platform is reliable. Now, the next concern that the client has is the freelancers on this platform reliable, all right? And the client does not have any way to measure it unless they interact with you. So now the client has to trust you before they can even reach out to you for the first time. They have to trust you. And this is where you, as a freelancer, need to know that the way you organize and optimize your profile your digital presence on the platform has to be trustworthy. There are certain things that you need to do and which we are going to talk about in the next couple of days. I'll keep emphasizing those things that will make you stand out. So for the clients to invite you or to, to, to look at your proposal and be happy to reach out to you, they must first of all trust that you are reliable and trust me, guys, Upwork has created the platform in such a way that you as the freelancer can actually provide this information to the client and the client can trust you instantly. For instance, feedback on the platform, when other clients provide feedback for you, that is one way that shows reliability and trust. Number two, testimonials is another way for you to show that you are trustworthy. Number three, the portfolio, the portfolio that you create. So creating a very strong and solid presence on the platform is very important in impacting the psychology of the client. So reliability. All right. Another part of the reliability aspect is how reliable are you as a person, as a, as a, as a professional on the platform? Do you respond promptly to messages? Do you deliver when you say you are going to deliver something? Are you professional enough? Do you have the, the expertise that you said you have? Are you competent? So the client is thinking about all of these things. So, yes, some parts you can provide some reliability and trust from the platform, but also your performance also contributes to that reliability. So if you don't know that every action that you take or how you interact with the clients can actually destroy that reliability or the trust that the client has already developed for you, 
then that is a problem. That's why you see many people, they get jobs today and then tomorrow they are laid off. They don't even know why. They are surprised. Because the client cannot send you a message and you stand and, and the client waits for hours or maybe a day or two before you respond. All right? So that's one thing, reliability. Number two is the clients are concerned about whether the money that they will be spending on a freelancer, they are getting that value back. All right? And that speaks to your um, skill sets. Do, you, do um, freelancers have the skill sets that they say they have? That is a concern that most clients have. In fact, let me tell you, most clients, some clients, not most, some clients, when they are recruiting on the platform, they recruit two people. And when they recruit two people, why? Why do they recruit two people? So they will test those two people for a couple of days and see which one performs best. And then they will select that one and drop the other person. This has happened before, even with me. And also I have seen it. It has happened with another freelancer that I know. And they had to drop the freelancer because the client has decided to go with another freelancer. So do you see that? So the, don't think that the clients, they don't know what they are doing or they just have like too much money to spend. No, they are concerned about the money that they are spending and they want to make sure that the skill set that you said you have you can deliver. So what does this mean in terms of you proving that you have that skill set? Number one, it's not just about being technical in your expertise or delivering your expertise. How do you deliver it? Because here, the clients will not micromanage you as a freelancer. You are an expert, right? You have expertise that you want to deliver. So once the client um, um, gives you a job, it is your responsibility to set expectations. You have to set clear expectations. How do you want to work with the client? You have to set those expectations. Be clear about that upfront. So, for instance, let me give you an example. Say um, a client has hired me for the first time. I will let the client know that, okay, I'll be meeting with you um, maybe twice a week. We are going to meet on Mondays to set the expectations for the week or set the goals for the week. And then on Friday, I will provide you a report of what I have done. Um, next, I would, I would also provide a plan, like a delivery plan. For their projects, if a client gives me a project, okay, I'm going to deliver X, Y, and Z from this time to this time, and then I'm going to deliver the rest on this time. So I give them like a plan, a solid plan. Now, once I do those two things, I will make sure that whenever I want to meet with the client, I'm going to that plan because I've already created that plan and I'm following that plan. Then I will also let the client know that if they have any concerns or maybe they have any thoughts about what my work or whatever I'm doing, let them come to me. Let them don't hesitate to come to me. So I'll set those expectations clear and upfront. All right? Now, what does this do for you? Now, the clients, first of all, they will, they will trust you. Number two, they will know that you are not a mediocre. You are an expert because you know what you're doing. Second, you are not there to waste their money. You are there to deliver. So if the client approves your delivery plan and then you keep on to that time when you say you are going to meet or give an update, you don't wait the client until they reach out to you, then that will set you apart from the other people. Now imagine two freelancers. You hire two freelancers. The first one comes and then you give them, you give them the same project. Let's say you give them the same project, right? Um, freelancer A decides to go to work straight away. They start working, right? And uh, they are really good. They start doing whatever the work they are doing. And then on whenever you want reports from them, they call, you ask them and then they provide a report. Maybe it will take um, a day or two before they respond to you. And then you have the other freelancer who did exactly what I said. They, they, engage, they engage you as a, free, as, a, as a client and then set all these expectations. In your mind, be honest, which of these freelancers would you trust most? Which of these freelancers will you think that they will give you the best results? 
I think you will take freelancer B. Because freelancer B has given you an expectation. They have a plan. They are not just doing things. You don't have to go to them to give you an update. They, they give you an update on, on the agreed time, right? So this is really important, guys. I'm trying to give you a scenario here so that you understand. Now, this is how the client thinks about the platform. And this is how, this is the psychology of the client. They want somebody who is reliable. They want to make sure they can trust this person and the person is able to deliver. Next, what is the psychology of you as a freelancer? You want to come to the platform and you want to do well, right? Now, you have to know that um, Upwork is a global platform. That's the first thing that you have to understand. And it is the number one freelancing platform on the globe, on the planet. It's big. It's bigger than all of the other platforms. And it is also very compressive. All right. What do I mean by this? Now, Upwork is having like thousands of jobs per day. There are so many people on the platform competing for this job. And these people, they are top-notch. Um, they have top-notch technical skills. The difference between them and uh, all the freelancers, the difference between freelancers that are doing well on the platform and other freelancers is soft skills. This psychology that I'm talking about. That's what differentiates you. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you are a professional in Excel. You know how to manipulate Excel very well. You really, you've mastered Excel. Know that you are not the only one on the platform that knows how to do this. There are hundreds, if not thousands of you guys that know how to do this. The only thing that differentiates you from others is because there are two things that differentiate you. Number one, if you understand the psychology of the platform. And number two, if you have the soft skills that are required to win jobs. All right, so what is the psychology there? The first thing that you have to know is Upwork is a very competitive platform. It is built for competition. That is how Upwork is making money, by keeping the competition intense. Upwork is making money by keeping the competition intense. And two, you also have to know that the clients, the clients love the competition because it helps them the competition helps them to, um, to find the best freelancers. So imagine you post a job if you are a client and you only have like two um, 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 proposals or people that applied for that job. That is less competitive. You don't have varieties, right? But if you have, you, if you have more freelancers than the number of jobs that are available on the platform, what will happen is if you post a job, you will, have, you will get like 100 proposals. So from those proposals, you, can, you will be able to find the right candidates for yourself. So you see, now Upwork is now creating features that are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are kind of generating income for them. So that to, first of all, to reduce the competition, to make sure to give some freelancers advantage. So if you know that the platform is built for competition, then you have to build a competitive mindset. You have to know that I am not coming here to be the least. I want to be the first. So if you want to be the first, what do you do? You have to optimize your skills. You have to optimize your digital presence. You want to be the best. You can practice to become the best person on the platform. So when you apply, you are applying with top-notch skilled people. However, your soft skills and your mentality should put you ahead of the competition. Guys, I am assuming, if you are listening, if you are still watching, I am assuming that you are following what I'm saying. Now, so the first thing is, the, like I said, the first thing is the, the platform is built for competition. So that is out of the way. So if you understand that the platform is built for competition, then you don't have to feel discouraged because you are not getting jobs. The problem is not the, it's not the platform or it's not the client. It is you. You have not prepared yourself for, for the competition. You have not packaged yourself for the competition. You have not optimized your mindset for competition. Number two, number two, the, the, the psychology that you need to understand is that 
any platform on the globe or anything that you are doing where competition is high, what do you think will happen? There will be a high level of failure. The failure rates will be high. All right? So what do I mean by that? If you have 50 people applying for one job, one role, do you think the clients will hire all 50 of them? No. The failure rate will be high. So you should not discourage because you send um, a few proposals and then you don't get a job. You should not feel discouraged about that. You should just know that you did not meet maybe the minimum requirement or maybe you are not a match. In my mind, for me, for instance, I, if I don't get a job, it simply means that I, am not, I was not a match for that job. It's not because I don't have the right skill sets. It's not because I am not good enough or I'm not competent. No. It just means that I'm not a match because there are so many variables, unknown variables to me, that the client is looking for and I don't know them. I'm just giving out what I know and from what I've read on the job adverts. All right? So if I don't get the job, I don't feel discouraged. In fact, if I get an invite, I know I am one of the lucky ones and I take that as a win. I think that's the next point that I want to talk about. All right? So what I mean by this is you not getting invites does not mean that you are not good. It does not mean that you are incompetent. It does not mean that others are better than you. It just means that you we are not a match. But what do you need to do? What actions do you need to take? You need to keep optimizing. Do variations of your, your proposals. I have seen a lot of people copying the same proposal, sending it for different um, job sets. That is a mistake. You have to have variations of your proposals for different job types. And also for each job type, you have to sit down, think about the job, read the job advert, and be prepared. Prepare a very solid proposal that you know that can stand out. So you, so you, you, you know that when the client reads your proposal, they can at, you can at least be a match. All right? And then the other thing is, the next point that I want to, the other psychological point that you have to deal with is, Nobody owns a job on Upwork. It is only the client that owns the job. So um, the, the, the idea of you attaching yourself in a job, attaching yourself, sorry, attaching yourself to a job is a big mistake, my friend. Guys, like I have to, some of these things, these are facts. And I, I'll have to let you know that um, you have to know this. Like, I don't, I don't have any other way of saying it. I have, I have made that mistake and a lot more people are making that mistake. How do you get attached to a job? Now, some people, when they apply for a job or they see a job, maybe the job meets, um, perfectly meets their, maybe the job is perfect, perfectly aligns with their, with their, um, their, their expertise, experience, and whatnot, and they want the job, right? They attach themselves to the job. So they make themselves, they make as if the job is theirs. Like they now, they now see themselves as they are the ones that the clients should call for the interview, right? Then if this is your attitude towards Upwork, you will always get a lot of disappointment. You will always feel disappointed. You will always feel down. And that is not what I expect you to do as someone who wants to win on the platform that is a draining you are draining your energy if you keep doing this it will drain your energy it will drain your your enthusiasm to do well on the platform here is how you should look at upwork when you see a job what you need to do is when you apply for a job just move on your your duty as a freelancer is to apply for jobs. That is your duty. That is actually what you need to focus on. To apply for jobs. Your duty is not to attach yourself to a job. Your duty is to search and apply for jobs. Keep applying. 
on a daily basis for me, my recommendation will be apply for at least two or three jobs every day. If you are really, if you really have time, apply for five jobs every day. Now, you have to know that applying for a job will cost you money. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. All right. But if you can apply for five jobs, that would be like the standard. Apply for five jobs each day. That's what you do. That is your focus. Your focus is to find the best next job and apply for it. Now, I'm not saying apply for every job that you see. I said apply for jobs that align with your um, um, expertise, that aligns with your experience. But apply for at least five jobs every day. Just keep doing it. All right. Now, let me give you some experience here. When I, when I started on Upwork, I was, I was really um, lazy. Lazy in the sense that I was not even applying for one job. Sometimes I applied just for one job or two in a week. So it took me like months before I started, um, before I, I got like my first job. The first jobs that I even got were those jobs where you are invited to do translation because you are living in a certain country. I don't call that jobs on Upwork. This is just a job that somebody gives you because they, they need you. You did not compete for that job. Nobody is competing for that job. Because they need you, they know that you are the only one that can do this job because you are staying in that particular locality or, or because of the country where you are coming from. All right? So those were the jobs that I, that, that, that I was getting. And because I was not applying, when I apply for one job, I would sit there and wait until somebody is recruited for that job and then I applied for the next one. That's a mistake. In fact, that is a big mistake, guys. Your job as a new freelancer, as somebody starting on the platform, your job is to apply. That's the only job that you have. Look for jobs, look for new jobs, and then apply for them. Apply for them. So now, the next thing is, the next um, um, psychological issue that most people um, face on Upwork is um, when they apply for few jobs, they feel that they have applied enough. No, they should no longer apply. You know, I have applied for, I have sent 10 proposals. I have not gotten any, any, um, um, any invites. Maybe it's because I'm black. Maybe it's because I'm coming from Africa or I'm coming from Asia. Maybe it's, maybe it's just because I'm not, you know, they are looking for this type of people. Maybe my English is not good. They, started, they start criticizing, discriminating themselves, putting themselves down. That is a mistake. And that is all in your mind. Basically, that's what I mean when I said, you, sometimes you fail, you, you defeat yourself before even you start fighting. Upwork is a competitive platform. Let me repeat it again. So it's not meant for lazy people. It's not meant for people that are, defeat, that are self, um, that, that have self-pity. You feel sorry for yourself. Do you know how many proposals that people send per day before they can get one invite? <laughs> if you know, if you know, you will, you will know that you are not doing anything. Let's say, let's, let's just assume that you are sending like um, five proposals per week. You are not doing anything. You are just one of those lazy people on upper. Like I said, you should be sending something like five proposals per, per day. If you are sending something like five proposals, I am not saying you should send random proposals, send proposals all over the place. I want you to hear me right. You should search for the right jobs that aligns with your expertise and send proposals. And send proposals. If you can send three, four, five per day, do it as long as the jobs are available and you have connects. All right? So... Don't self-discriminate yourself. Don't defeat yourself before you even start fighting. All of the people, I have seen people that, are, there are a lot of people on the platform, guys. There are a lot of people that don't even know how to write proposals. They don't know how to do it. And I have taught you on this, on this channel how to write proposals. I've shown you examples of good proposals. If only you can learn those skills, you can beat the competition. It's easy to beat the competition. That's the next point. That's, that's where I'm going to, right? That's the next point. It is very, very easy to beat the competition. Most of you think that Upwork is difficult. If you have that in your mind, you will not win. 
If you think that Upwork is one of the most difficult platforms in the globe, then you will not win. I'm not trying to tell you that Upwork is easy. I'm saying that you should have a positive mindset when it comes to Upwork. It is possible for you to get a job. Upwork only works for people that are determined, people that have the, the fortitude. That's, I don't know whether, um, I think it's a strength of mine. I am not an English person. If it were my local language, I would have told you what I mean. But the fortitude means the strength, the strength of your mind, the strength of your mind, how strong is your mind, your attitude towards um, winning. All right? So you should not be somebody who has like self-pity, who gives up easily, somebody who wants to just um, do a few things and then win. No. When you are competing, that's why it is very rewarding. When you win a job on Upwork, it feels so rewarding. You feel so powerful. And because, why do you feel so powerful when you win a job? It's because you have defeated a lot of people and you came you came on top of the situation. So you feel so good. And the money, guys, the cash. It's amazing when you start landing in your account. So the, 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 the idea of you defeating yourself, feeling that, oh, um, um, I'm not good enough. It's not, it's not, no, no, no. You don't have to, you don't have to do that on, to yourself, all right? The next thing is for you not to think that um, I have done too much, all right? You only do too much when you get your jobs, when you get two or three jobs. That's when you have done too much. <laughs> but if you don't have a job, you've not done anything. So don't think that when you send few proposals, you think you've, do you've done enough. No, keep sending those proposals and you have to think around these things. You don't have to um, start thinking that, or when I send 10 proposals, at least I should have like, no, you can send up to 40 proposals. You can send 50 proposals without getting a job. That does not mean that you are not good enough. But there is one thing though that I want to mention that is really important. Don't just keep sending the same proposals all the time. That is what is called, it's, it does not make sense. All right. For you to do, keep doing the same thing and you expect a different result. Let's say some people have like a single template. That's the only template they are sending. You keep sending that same template, keep sending it, keep sending it, and then you are not getting any results. Then you think that uh, maybe it's because um, something is, um, they don't like me. Maybe the client don't like, those, those clients don't, no. Clients, what clients are looking for is good proposals and they are looking for people that are really um, understand out. That's what the clients are looking for. They are not, they don't care whether you are white, you are black, they don't care. If they want, if they care about those things, they will put it as a criteria on the job adverts. So you don't need to apply. So you, 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 you have to, you have to keep applying and you don't have to um, limit yourself that once I have applied for X amount, I need to have a result. No, don't keep doing the same thing over and over. So keep optimizing your proposals. Keep changing them. Look at, go, come and watch again my videos if you have created one or two. I would say create like three sets of proposals. Organize them, structure them, review them, and then keep sending them. So for each job, tailor the proposal and send that proposal. All right? Don't copy and paste um, proposals for every job. Some jobs require different ways of answering the questions or responding to the client. All right. So if you want to learn how to write proposals, maybe you are really um, into this and you want to get started, you can watch my previous videos, but I'm going to deal with that topic later on on this um, series. So tell you, don't, don't keep doing the same proposals over and over. I don't want to overemphasize this point, but it's really important. So overall, your psychology as, um, 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 as a freelancer, you should know that this is a competitive platform and you are not the only one with technical skills. There are other people that are having um, um, highly technical skills. And two, you have to have a very solid um, online presence to win, to stand out. And, sec and, and finally, you don't have to give up. The jobs does not belong to you. 
they belong to everyone. Your role is to apply and you have to optimize your proposal. And when you send your proposal, keep applying. That's the attitude. Don't sit there and wait until you get a reply. If you, when you get a reply, then you prepare for the interview. Otherwise, keep doing your application. Keep sending your application. Now, one question, though, that you may want to ask. Well, maybe I don't have enough funds. Now, there are, you are not prevented from buying. All right? You can buy. I think it's $1.5 per 10 connects. You can buy connects. So you can increase the number of connects. When you create an account, you get 50 connects. Those connects are very small because now I think Upwork is taking about 16 connects to apply for a job. If you don't know what a connect is, um, connects are um, like points that you use to apply for a job, right? So when you apply for a job on Upwork, Upwork is going to take 16 connects from the connects that they've given you. So when you create, so let me take a step back so that you understand fully. When you create an account on Upwork, they give you 50 connects. They are like points. And then when a job is advertised on the platform, Upwork will ask you to spend, you are going to spend um, 16 connects for one job. So 16 connects is the minimum. Now you can increase those connects by boost your um, proposal. So what that means is that you can add the number of connects and then they can show for, for Upwork to show your, your, your proposal at the top of the list. If you want that, you can spend more connects and you have to compete for, that, for, those, for those four spots. They have four spots that they, they monetize. So you have to compete for them. So it depends on how much people have already boosted. Then you can put up, sometimes you put up to 50, 60. It depends on the job. I will not um, put 50 connect for a job that is going to pay me $5 per hour or $10 per hour. No, I will not do it. But if the job aligns with my expertise and it is a well-paid job, definitely I'm going to boost my proposal because I want to stand a chance for the client to see my proposal. That is one important thing. You want the client to see your proposal, open it, and then if they are happy with your proposal, they can invite you for the job. So that's how Connect is used on the platform. So Upwork is selling 10 Connects for $1.5, which means you will have to spend like $2 per one job. So you have to really think about which jobs you need to apply. So if you are going to apply for five jobs per, 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 per day, it means you have to buy additional Connects. That's um, something that I cannot help you with but you have to do it so you can put your credit card and actually buy those connects. It's very important if you do that and you will not want to spend $2 on a job when you know that you are not sending a proper proposal. So that's why you need to work on your proposal, work on the things that we'll be discussing on this, plat on this, on this series so that you can optimize yourself and prepare yourself for, to win. All right? So guys, that's the, the, the end of the psychological part of this um, 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 talk. So there is a whole package of psychology that goes around. And if you understand some of these things that I've just explained, I know the video has been going on for a long, for a while now, but I'm going into some of these details, explaining all of these things, because I want you to understand some of these things. Some of them, write them down and note them, and then you can come later again and watch the video. The next thing that I wanted to do is basically walk you through the platform. Like, um, just show you, let's say you are a new user, you've never used the platform. It is important that you understand how the platform is structured. So let's get to the computer so that we can do this. So first things first, I'm going to share my screen. All right, guys. So yes, so now one thing also that I want to say is, most people spend a lot of time thinking about whether they should start creating the account or not. Now, the moment you watch this video, if you have watched up to this level, one of the things that I will say to you is don't waste time. Go and create your account immediately. And I'm going to show you um, in day two how to create your account. All right. But today, I just want to walk you through um, how the platform looks. But it is important that you don't delay, you don't waste time. Go straight and create your account so, so that you, you start the journey. 
starting the journey is more important than studying all, keep studying, keep studying without you doing anything. Take action. So as we go on a daily basis, do the things that I'm going to show you. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some assignments of things that you need to do today. So that um, when we go to day two, you, you, you are progressing, you are making progress. All right. So here is the, the upper platform. So as you can see, uh, you have your sign up button there and you can see that the, the website looks really clean and professionally done. This is a very big website and um, you should take a look around, man. You should come look around, see, um, read through. I will encourage you to do that because this is really, really important. All right. So um, as you can see, there is also like a chat there. <laughs> A very interesting um, um, charts um, icon there. All right. So the, the the important thing is that you need to note if you come to this um, side, you will see the search. There is a search bar, and you have this um, drop down that says talents, um, talents, or 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 you can click down whether it's you are looking for a project or you are looking for jobs, right? So talents basically means that um, let me zoom out a bit. All right. So um, talents uh, means that you are looking um, higher professionals and agencies. Very excellent. It's simple. And buy ready to start services. So sometimes you have to. There are there is a way for you to create projects. Let's say you have expertise in a particular field, you can create projects and sell those projects to clients and just buy those projects, and then you can see jobs. All right. So uh, if you are a freelancer, this is the tab that you want. You just need to click and then it changes. If you are looking for projects, you can also search for a specific project there. So let's say here you can just click and then search for a job. But most importantly, what you need to understand is the um, Opoc has organized all of the services or the specialties or the things that you can do on the platform or the services that you can provide on the platform in very unique and professional um, categories. So the first category there is this IT, um, this development, all right? So this refers to like software development, um, IT services. If you click on it, you will see that you have this window that now talks about development and IT experts to scale your organization. So let's say you are looking for um, talent. So remember, I, I am looking for what, what is selected here is talent. So that's what the website is showing, all right? If I change that to something else, then it will show something else, all right? So here you are looking for developer hire independent professional to shorten your development cycles. And indeed, so you can see now um, Upwork is recommended trusted remote um, development and IT experts. So now Upwork is recommending by categories Java developers. You see, these are a group of developers that are doing well. PHP developers, you can see that, all right? So everything is organized in a well-structured manner. Then you can say AI services. So now since we have the era of AI, so if you click there, you can also see um, different services that are being um, provided right here. Popular AI services that are available on the platform, get advice and tips from an expert, build a custom chatbot and so on. All of these experts are available you can also see, explore what's possible with a consult consultation. So you can see here, you can book like consultancy. So you can provide this service as well. If let's say you are an expert in an, uh, you have some expertise in consulting, or maybe you have some expertise in terms of AI, you can provide consultation. Somebody can pay you $100 for 30 minutes or $200 for one hour, something like that. You can provide that consultation, that service. You can create that as a, as a project or as a package and then sell it to people. So these are consultants that people can, these are consultants that people can hire to talk about AI projects. And also these are um, um, freelancers that somebody can hire if you want. So you can see some of these guys, you can take a look, a deeper look into them. So I just want to show you that these are all um, categories that, that exist here. So you have different type of um, um, services that you can provide. So let's say you are in marketing, you can also take a look. If you are just somebody who is just getting started, maybe you don't have any professional um, background, but maybe you have worked as an admin assistant or you can, you can organize calendars, you know how to answer emails, 
you just know how to do or okay, support people like CEOs and whatnot. You can also um, go into the admin and customer support areas and see what is available there and see which um, 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 expertise that are available there, like virtual assistant. Who is a virtual assistant, right? Like, try to find out. Um, you can Google it and find out who, who are these people, data entry specialists, project managers, and so on. So you can see all of these as, as, as skill sets or expertise that are available on the platform that you can take a look at, all right? Then you even have more here, like writing and translation. So it's also a category here. You have finance and accounting, engineering and architecture, HR, and legal. So if you're a lawyer, and you can also provide legal advice for people, all right? Then apart from that, let's go now to the top there. You have these tabs that we have there, like find talent, all right? So I just want to zoom some of these things. So if you click on this tab, now if I leave that, if I, if I click away, so each of these tabs, they have this drop down. So when you come there, you can see find talent. This is for, say, you are um, a client and you want to look for talent. You can easily um, post a job and hire a professional, all right? Or you can, you can browse and buy projects. You can get advice from an industry expert. This is where the consult consultation comes in. All right, I've explained this. So um, find work, ways to earn. So how do you earn on Upwork? So this is for, for freelancers. So you have to find a job, right? So ways to earn. Learn why Upwork has the right opportunities for you. Find work for your skills. Explore the kind of work available in your field, right? So you can... So you can see that things are, are, are well-structured here. Why Upwork? So why do you choose Upwork? Why you should choose Upwork? Maybe let me put it that way. Why should you choose Upwork? It's very important, right? You can read um, success stories, discover um, teams, right? And how to hire, how to find work, reviews, and so on. And then you have enterprise clients. So enterprise clients, these are big um clients that like say for instance they, they 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 sometimes they spend up to millions of dollars on the platform so they can become enterprise clients so if you are an enterprise client you can click and then they can they can so basically upwork sometimes recommend they 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 they, they hire on behalf of this enterprise client they, like the enterprise client um consult upwork to hire for them right on on their behalf something like that so basically this is like the walkthrough of this platform so i would say take a look it's very important that you understand how the platform works how it is structured and um, it can help you to be confident about how to navigate the, the platform right so just take your time just go through everything to take take a read and then it will help you so guys um this is okay yes so guys um this is where I am going to stop this introductory um, video, but here is your assignment for um, day one. Now, I want you to um, go through the video again, just listen to it, take a notebook and note down the psychological things that I will talk about, right? The key points that I mentioned about you, your psychology, like the way you think, your mindset um, as a freelancer how you should approach the platform, right? Like the key learning points, I want you to note those down. Then the second thing you need to do is to come to the platform, actually navigate it. If you already have an account, all you need to do is to go to that account, navigate the platform, search for different things, try to explore, and also read the terms and conditions of Upwork. It's very important. I want you to do that, that particular part. Read the terms and conditions of Upwork. How do Upwork give badges? What are the, the criteria for you to get each badge? How do Upwork um, um, protect you from, from fraud or scammers on the platform? These are things that you need to understand, all right, as a freelancer. So I want you to go spend time, know how Upwork is protecting you, how Upwork issues badges, and then understand the terms and conditions of Upwork. I'm not saying you should read everything. I'm saying have an overview of these things so that you understand the way Upwork um, operates. And then the third thing that I want you to do, I want you to study and understand 
five features that Upwork provides, right? Number one is availability badge. Number two, I want you to understand, I want you to learn about how to boost your proposal so that you can be on top of the, 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 the list of the client. All right. Number three, I want you to learn how to search for jobs on the, on the platform. And number four, I want you to learn about how do you negotiate your rates? Okay. What are the type of rates that Upwork has, like fixed rates versus, um, versus um, hourly rates? All right. And then number five, the Upwork desktop app. I want you to just read about it a little bit, discover it on the platform, and then read about it. Now, if you love this content and you've watched up to this level, here is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the comments and drop a comment that says day two. All right. Just say day two. It means that will tell me that you have watched the entire video and you've seen everything and you understood the assignment. Thank you very much and see you on the next one.